This is going to be an amazing sister to sister show. We have questions like this. Who inspires you? You do, ah. and you, and also someone wrote in, I don't feel worthy, and somebody has a question about heaven. I love heaven, and we <laughs> love that you're with us. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. I'm so glad that you've joined us. My name is Kathy and with us we have five opinionated women of God. But I want to welcome Angela Madden who's sitting in for Flo today. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be with you ladies. Well, we'll see about that. How, <laughs> how you feel after the show. <laughs> She'll be fine, I promise. Hey listen, this first question is really a good one. I think you'll like it. I like it. I can believe for God to work in someone else's life, but I find it hard to believe or feel worthy to ask God to work in mine. Ooh, thank you for sending that in. What do you have, Cor? I'd say, would you say to someone else that they're not important enough for God? Would you say to someone else, that they're not worthy enough for God? Would you say to someone else their problem isn't significant enough for God? If you wouldn't say that to somebody else, then stop saying it to yourself. That's good. Because mm -hmm. you are God's creation and you are created in the image of God. So don't say things to yourself that you wouldn't say to somebody else. But someone felt that. I mean, they wrote it in and I, I respect that you feel that way and I'm sad that you feel that way. Yeah. What do you have, Amy? I would ask them a question back. I would say, are you a son or a servant? Mm -hmm. Because servants um, have a different approach than a, a son does. A son has access. A son has ownership. A son has responsibility. A son has a relationship. A servant just comes in you know, no connection with the father. So I would, I would challenge that thought process that I am unworthy, unloved. God will do it for somebody else and not for me. It's like, wait, 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 wait. I am a daughter of the most high God. I know who I am and I cannot be shaken from that stance. Okay. What do you have, Roxy? Wow. I, I think that's a false humility and ah. she's got pride. Ooh, that's and good. Um, she needs to repent of that <clears throat> because she's looking at herself. Well, sometimes when we think we're so lowly, we're no good, we're so focused on ourselves, we forget who God is. That's unbelief. Hebrews says that we have a high priest that has felt our similar feelings. That's right. He has felt those things but we can approach his throne of grace and mercy to receive grace and mercy. So what I would like to say to her is read the scriptures, as Amy and Corey said, read the scriptures about who you are and who God is right. and start believing who he is. He is your father. Right. Angela, what do you have? Yeah, you know, one thing that I go to is we recognize and we'll say all the time, you know, he came and died for us while we were yet sinners. And we say it effortlessly. You know, it's the foundation of our belief in Christ. But a lot of that doesn't come within. And so we see ourselves in our worst state. We always see our biggest flaws, our biggest weaknesses, our most atrocious sins and compromises. And when we do that, we focus on that one space in us and we're saying, you didn't die for me then. But truly, if you take that scripture, it is him saying, I died for you right. when you chose the most atrocious version of you, when you were caught in the most ridiculous sin. That's when I chose to die for you. And when we recognize that is for me, it changes everything. And now I know I was loved in my worst state. Oh, I can show up in any mm -hmm. state. My mm -hmm. Jesus is with me and he mm -hmm. truly is the God who is love. Right, but I hope that answered the question for you, but I wanna tell you one thing that I'm so grateful that you watch us. And one time I was in worship um, at our church and I was praying for all these people, this one, this one, this one, this one. And, and God spoke to my heart so clearly. How about I fill you up, Kathy? Mm -hmm. So I feel the opposite of you. I believe that God's 
for me all the time. Mm -hmm. And the other people, uh, okay. <laughs> all right. okay, so this is a really good, good question too. I'm gonna go to Amy, because you're my pasta. Um, what will heaven be like, Amy? That is such a great question. And there's many facets to approach this, but I wanna approach it through a prayer that we pray all the time, right? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. My kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So like what in the world is in heaven that we could have here on earth? Well, the kingdom of heaven we know is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So I would say in heaven, to me, it's not about what it looks like. I mean, we know Jesus is there. We know angels are there. We know it's perfect, but it's, it's being right standing with God. It's be, like, like Angela just said that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. We are in right standing with the Father. That's what we can bring to earth. What about joy? It's gonna be perfect peace, perfect joy, non-judgment. You can be your true self. In, well, we could bring that here to earth. So what I would challenge is that while heaven is our ultimate you know, home, while we're here, we don't live like hell on earth. That in some capacity, to the best of your ability, bring heaven into your own life, bring it into your home, bring it into your church, bring it on sister to sister, and have a little bit of heaven on earth. Okay, Ooh, all that's right. That's awesome. Well, I am gonna mention what Revelation looks like. I wanna hear it. Well, because you go into churches and <clears throat> you see angels and cherubs and harps and clouds. <laughs> well, there's three heavens. The first heaven's the atmosphere, the next one is the universe, and then the third heaven is heaven. I'm going to show our viewers if we can get that. <clears throat> Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? What is it? These are the gems in heaven. They are in the walls of heaven. They are in the foundations of heaven. The 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles are on the foundation. You know, we think in just clouds or light. And God is the light. It says there will be no sun because God and the sun is light. Heaven is glorious. If these gems just reflect a portion right. of it, the creativity of God, and I just really need to say one more thing. People into gemology about pantheism and about worshiping jewels. There's a lot of people that are doing that, the crystals, mm. that worship the creator, mm. not the created thing. Right. And when you begin to worship the creator and you love the gems, the jewels, the crystals, mm -hmm. he's going to give you insight mm -hmm. into himself about these objects. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Somebody else, heaven. You know, I think that heaven, we see the different descriptions throughout the Bible. But I think when I think of heaven, I think of the fruits of the spirit. Okay. So kind of like what you were saying, Pastor Amy, it's, you know, it's that peace, it's that joy, it's that love, it's that kindness. Heaven, we will get to look mercy in his face. Mm -hmm. We will get to look goodness in his face. We will have a face for love. And when we understand those ideas, we understand them here on earth, when we see them face to face, it's transformative and there's no end to it. It's an right. infinite, endless, boundless love that consumes our minds and our being. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, oh boy. Corey, I heaven, think, come I, on. I mean, I think the one thing that I always like was drawn to when I was younger was um, that there, you know, we get our new bodies and there's like no more pain. Yes. There's no sadness. You know, it's just, it, it's just, it's perfect, you know, and it's just, I always think of the Mercy Me song. I can only imagine, imagine right. you know, mm -hmm. just walking beside the Lord and just being able to like ask him any question you want to, you know, and when I was little, my question was always like, is there a real Santa Claus? Like yeah. that was my question when I was little, but like, you know, just being in like perfect harmony with, you know, just with the Lord and with everyone around and just like, I don't know. It's just, you. I can only imagine, yeah. you know, 
know it's beyond anything we can imagine mm -hmm. here on earth. The gems, the perfect body, the, it's just it's just beyond anything the we can imagine. The people that we love. I mean, when, when you see the stories and read the accounts of people who have gone to heaven and come back, mm -hmm. maybe some people don't believe that. I believe that yeah. because I want to believe that. <laughs> yeah. And I want to see my people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was reminded of a dream that I had, you know, thinking about heaven and I saw my grandma in heaven and I saw her room and I, I can't even tell you how it was like this warm light but the colors in her bedroom were the colors that my grandma loved she was like a peaches and cream the perfect grandma florally sweet and it was that same thing but there was a little bed in that room and I said, I called my dad and I said, Dad, Emma was out with a little girl. Who would that be? And he goes, Amy, that was about the time you miscarried. Oh, Is that sweet? Wow. So my grandma was probably with my, our little girl in heaven. Oh my gosh. Is that sweet? Yes. But that's awesome. what heaven's going to be like. You're going to <laughs> right. see those babies you lost. You're going to see your loved ones that knew Jesus. And we're going to have crowns that we're going to lay at his feet. Feet, and it's just going to be this never ending sense of love and forgiveness and mercy and grace. Okay, I like that. I like all that that, that she said. Okay, but I like this question too. So you're going to, Angela, I'm coming to this so you can get a chance. Okay. okay. Uh, sometimes it's hard. Why doesn't God reveal himself more obviously in everyday life? And I say, look at this, the buds that are coming up. Resurrection is promised every spring. God reveals. Yes, what do you have? Yeah, you know, and I think scripture says that. Mm -hmm. If we look at creation, we right. know that there is God. I think that it's very difficult in life. You know, it says the cares of this world and the pursuit of other things, it chokes out the word. That's true. You know, and, and so the life that we live is busy and it's full of other things and it causes our gaze to focus on the here and the temporal and that's why I love that mm -hmm. question even about what does heaven look like because when we get our perspective when we get our mind on eternal things we begin to see eternal things around us here and now mm -hmm. when we focus that God is ever present you cannot remove him I know a lot of things like we, we think we can remove him or they can take him out of the schools they can't remove him he cannot be removed Amen. from anywhere he is always present so when when we get our mind focused on the reality that he is here, then everything is seen through that lens. But we have to correct our lens and it's only found in being still with God. Um, this is flow seat and I think you've done a little flow. That's good. That's good. What do you have? You know, Hebrews says that God revealed himself in his son Jesus. And the scripture says Christ in you the hope no. of glory. Yes. So when others, when you look at others or you look at other things, the creation and so on, you see God's handiwork. So maybe this person is looking at something, looking in everyday life to see God, but missing, as my sister right, said, right the Lord all around us because Christ in us is the hope yes. of glory and that's why we have to be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. All the time. Yeah. Yes. I mean, why doesn't God reveal himself more obviously to me in my everyday life? I mean, to that person, I would say, open your spiritual eyes. Right. And I keep thinking about the Ephesians prayer. You know, I pray that the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, give you a spirit of wisdom and a revelation so that you will know him better. And when your spiritual eyes are open, you will see God working all in your life, in your family, in your business, in your finances, in your health. So open the spiritual eyes of your heart so they can see God at work. And open your real eyes too. Look around. Yes. Beauty, beauty. What do you think, Corey? I mean, I just think we, especially as Americans, just are too busy. Like, I just, mm. I really mm. think we allow busyness to just take over our lives and we don't take the time because it's so obvious and just all around us. Look up at the sky, look mm. down at the ground. Like, our, our own bodies speak of God's greatness. I mean, uh, God gave his name when 
he was asked, what is your name? And he said, I am, and he gave his name Yahweh. And, and it's mm -hmm. been said that the, the, the name Yah and Wei is like the sound that you make when you breathe. It's literally the ya and the way is the sound of inhaling and exhaling. So literally wow. the breath. Wait, let, every, me hear, let me hear that, Corey. Ya and way is the sound. I mean, it's, it's, it's the Here, sound really literally good. of the inhale and the exhale. And so literally every breath we take is yeah. speaking the name yes. of God. Yes. Right. You can't even breathe without speaking the name of God. Yes. And so it's just God is revealing himself in every way, every day. But we just don't take the time to stop and think about that and to, to know that he is God. I am. Right. I think sometimes people that don't have a faith background, they don't read the word of God, they don't attend church, they don't have friends like us mm -hmm. to take their hands and guide them, they might just the humanistic point of view. What? What, this, what, what do you mean this God is revealing himself every day? So I think it's up to us, you know, this show, your questions, our answers, to prove to people. You, we can't prove it. God will prove it to them. Mm -hmm. So we, we must be more intentional, I think, in presenting the Lord to all those people that know nothing of him. Okay, but you know, and you're going to stay right there. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. This is really a lively show today. And this next question that you sent in, who inspires you to be a better person? I asked the sisters if I could take that question because who inspires me is George. And you, not just because he cooks for me. <laughs> I've talked about him a lot. The truth is coming But out. George is so content with his life and he lives in such peace. That inspires me to settle it down. The, <laughs> the other person that inspires me to be a better person is my daughter because I want to model for her what faith looks like. I want her to understand that a loving, godly mother is who she needs to look up to. That's me. So I have to be a better person for her. So that's my answer and I, I stick to it. Well, my, <laughs> what do you got? my daughter also is my inspiration right now. To be a better person. She, well, yes. no, I mean, oh. she actually is um, on fire for the Lord. Good, she Corey. has had a spiritual reawakening and she is just, she is reading her Bible. She's doing her devotions. She is just, um, she's getting baptized um, oh, coming up here soon. Good. And um, she just is just so like, it's so inspiring to just see her loving God's word. That is inspiring to yeah, see a so teenager good being so in love with the Lord and so in love with reading God's word. And it's like, you know, you get to this age and you're just like, yes, I, you know, I love God's word and I love going to church. You know, you kind of like, you get into a spiritual rut, you know, right. and like to see her, that is just, that inspires That's me. That's good. You know, That's it's good. like, oh, you know what? This, this is giving me a kick in the butt, you know? Good girl. <laughs> who else inspires whom? Who do you got? Um, my husband mm -hmm. inspires me. My, See, husband, yay. <laughs> my kids inspire me. My church family blows me away. They inspire. I like, I can't believe that I even get to be in the same church with our church family. Um, I, and my mentors, including my parents, they inspire me. And mm -hmm. I think if you're not careful, if you're not looking for those people that are inspiring you, you're going to live a really mm -hmm. almost deflated yeah. life. Like you need to look for who inspires right. you yes. and what inspires Good. you. It, it ignites something in the purpose and the calling and the gift on the inside of you. So I'm thankful. That's and good. you inspire me. Oh, God. Oh. Angela, who inspires you to be a better person? You know, I love the way that Amy just said that because I feel like our eyes should be wide open looking at every interaction and every mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. for a place I can glean from. You know, scripture says, honor the prophet and receive a prophet's reward. Honor a righteous man and receive the righteous man's reward. So when I show up in a space and I honor Roxy for who she is, when I honor you ladies for who you are, in those 
deepest places, I received the gift of who you are. And so in some way, even today, you've inspired me. I look at how you show up for this show, Kathy, and how fun you are and full of light. And that inspires me, you know? So every space I go into, I really try to glean from others to be inspired and be sharpened as iron unto iron. Well, there you go. What, We're who's sharpened. one person that inspires you? Um, I mean, there's so many. Pastor Darlene Bishop is my spiritual mama, okay. so I feel like yeah. I have to mention her yeah. because really that's yeah. how I came to see TV uh, is yeah. um, from her. She's an amazing woman of God. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Wow. Roxy, who inspires you? Well, you guys know if you've watched the show, my parents, my children, mm -hmm. I have lifted them up, my friends, the spiritual people around me and you sisters. I just have to say one thing that's recent for me. I have a friend who is a combat veteran. Mm. She uh, lived among those burning pits in the, uh, you know, in Afghanistan wow. and drove into combat the soldiers. And she is now, she, you know, she had, and she doesn't mind me saying, she had to have a hysterectomy, they believe, because the cancer came mm. into her body. Mm -hmm. And she had a child right before that happened, so thank God mm -hmm. for that. But mm. she turned all of that PTSD and everything you go through. She is helping now. She's on a leadership team to help other combat veterans. So what is the highest calling we have? Wow. Blessed right. is the person who lays down their life for their That's brothers. Right. So when you look at people and you think about them and what they go on, she goes, oh, it's tragic. No, she turned it into <coughs> a blessing for other people. So that is so inspirational What's your name? to me. Oh, uh, we're not River. saying her name. We're not saying your name, but you, we Jess. love you. Jess. I'll just say her first We name. love you, Jess. Well, while I've got your attention, yes. I'm going to give you this last question. Oh, okay, is that okay? Yes. Okay. We have a scripture. You're the scripture girl. Uh, John 16, sure 24 says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. What does that mean? Ask and you shall receive. Oh man, this question's loaded. I'd love to have a show just on it. John, you know, the beloved John, Jesus is telling them in chapter 16, I am going to leave you. Mm -hmm. I am going to yeah. die. I am going to be crucified, but you are going to have pain as a woman in labor. But just like when I rise from the dead, when that baby is born, your joy will be full and no one will take it from you. So what do we glean from that? When we're going through sorrowful things, when God leads us through the valley, he doesn't cause them, but he leads us through. There is going to be joy, just like the seed that goes into the ground. Jesus said it must die, that it bears fruit. So there's sorrow that we sometimes endure, that God elevates, he resurrects. Easter Sunday, he rises from the dead. So if someone's going through sorrow, understand that on the other side, Jesus rose from the dead. He is a victor. You will be a victor also. I like yes. it. Yes. What do you have? Help. Well, and I love that you brought up the context of this scripture, yeah. which is exactly right. I'm like, you've got to read the whole chapter yeah. yes. and the whole book to gather this. But Jesus is saying, listen, if I don't go away, I can't send you the helper the comforter. So Jesus is going away. He's telling the disciples, I'm going to be gone. But now the reason you can pray this way, ask that you and you will receive that your joy may be full is because a few verses later, Jesus said, and I will not need to ask the father on your behalf for you'll ask him right. directly Amen. because of your new relationship with me. That's right. Which brings you great joy when you can go directly to the Father in Jesus' name because you have access by the Holy Spirit and it's a game changer That's in your right. prayer life. That's yeah. right. Well, you know, what's really crazy wow. is that um, 1623 yeah. says, ask in my name. Yeah and the Father will give it to you. Mm -hmm. So that whole thing, we, we, we now have an advocate for us. His yes. name is Jesus. And we can go directly to the Father in His name. That's exactly what Amy said. And we're so grateful for the scriptures that fill us up and give us the answers so we can give our hearts to you. We'll be right back to wrap this thing up. I'm feeling kind
kind of jacked up right now because when you know who you are and the access that you have because of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit because of Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, it's a game changer. We're talking about what is heaven like and I don't feel worthy and, and who inspires me. These questions are answered in the very words from God. So let's go right now to the scripture in Isaiah 50 verse 7. And it says this, For the Lord God helps me, therefore I am not disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I will not be ashamed. Can we just like, re -re -re, like rewind and just say, for the Lord, God helps me. Do you need help today? I was driving here with so many things on my mind. I just said, help me here. Help me here. Help me with this. Help me with that. Help me with this. Help me with this. Help me here. Help me there. He's here to help you. In the message translation, I love what it said. My champion is right here with me. God is right here with you right now. Let's take our stand Together. You're not in this alone. You have a great helper. You have somebody that's going to come alongside and strengthen you and support you and help you. And be, you're not alone. And it says this in, in the second verse of this chapter. Was my arm too short not to deliver you, God is saying? Do I lack the strength to rescue you? Are you kidding? Like he is God and he does not change. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Think about all the times God's delivered you, rescued you, saved you and helped you. And he's going to do it again for you today. You see, this is why you watch Sister to Sister. This is why I say these sisters make me a better person. And the scripture goes like this, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. They do make me a better Kathy. See you next time.